Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. I'll confess, 808 Day had me going there. It really took me back, back to the days of my youth, the carefree days when all we had to worry about were envelope generators and filters. You know, in the DAW, I, you know, and I don't have any of the Eurorack stuff. I don't think about it anymore. I mostly just go for samplers and stuff like that. But this morning I woke up and I thought to myself, what if I took a noise source and sent it through some step modulation? Could I get a drum beat? What would happen? Let's find out. <laughs> Okay, here's the very ugly ES-1. And um, you guys know what white noise sounds like, right? And over here we have uh, just, you know, Isotopes Insight. And you can see it's just got like all the frequencies. Let's just do that again. Pretty much evenly distributed. It rolls off a little bit above 20,000. Well, white noise is um, just a, a, a great source for any kind of modulation or, a, you know, a envelope generator-based effects. And, of course, that's what I was interested in doing. So these are the effects that I chose. Uh, first of all, let me just say this. When you're holding down a note and you want to work with it, go into Logic's um, project settings MIDI, chase, and check notes. That way, when you start a note in the middle of a held note, it will actually play. It's not a default setting, and it won't persist. You just have to set it within templates and stuff. Very irritating for me. Anyway, um, what I've done is I've set up a channel strip with just one of those ES1s with really just kind of everything pulled you know, just the noise. I've opened up the filter completely, nothing. It's just noise. <laughs> and um, I've turned the volume of the slider all the way down and set up uh, buses one, two, and three. And those buses are set to pre-fader, which means that over here on the targets of the buses, I can create individual effects, and that's what I've done. So the very first thing I thought was, well, what about a kick? I'll just replay my basic process here. So I sent my kick to an auto filter, and the auto filter is run by an LFO. Now, the, the LFO is not the world's greatest envelope generator, but it's not horrible. And you can see the LFO is set to a quarter note, and the envelope generator that's being triggered by the LFO, this is controlling the filter, uh, is pretty tight. I've got a zero millisecond attack time and a slow decay. Actually, didn't make that much difference, it turned out, about the decay and the sustain. Um, I tried different waveform settings, for instance, you hear the difference? It turns out just a, a downward ramp is probably the best move for me. And I'm using a little distortion just to get it going there. If I push the LFO up a little bit more, we'll get a little more highs. Might be useful, but didn't really want that. Um, I also added a channel EQ to really emphasize the frequencies that I wanted in my kick. And finally, very simply, a multipressor. Whoops, I not, not set it to loop. Finally, a multipressor just to keep everything tamed. Now, one of the artifacts I've noticed is when I initially start the, the note in Logic, we get that little squeaky sound. Let's leave that kick drum um, out of the mix for a moment. I'm going to mute it and move on over here to the snare drum. Now, for the snare drum, I'm using step effects, and that's a little more normal. Like, back in the day, what we would have had is um, some sort of voltage sequencer with individual voltages on each step, and we'd send those voltages or the trigger to an envelope generator, and that's very much like what we have here. I have the gate mix turned on, and the steps that I'm interested in being opened up, and you can hear that. 
going on here. Now here, I definitely enjoyed playing with the filter and um, distortion and a little bit of reverb and also some delay. If I take the delay way up, you'll hear the effect. Just to give it a little bit of color. Not bad. Let's hear it with the kick. It's not as good as I remember working with analog gear back in the day, but it's beginning to give me a really fun vibe. And finally, step effects for my hi-hat. And here in the step effects, I made um, each step tight. You can know, if you grab over here on the step effects, you can change the width, which is kind of fun. You can also have an open hi-hat by linking them as I've done right here. It's pretty cool, right? Well, all told, not bad. And Step Effects has a little swing. We got the filter going on. We could open this filter up a little bit more if we wanted a little more brilliance. I'm using a band pass. All those things are, are possible. Well, thank you, boys. Well, it occurred to me and of course it probably would to you too, I don't have to use white noise. I could use a chord progression. I could use a chord progression and apply it, all these effects, to the chord progression. Let's listen to my chords. Here's my progression. It's thick because I wanted low frequencies and high frequencies, a string pad. And basically E minor, D, G, back to D, but D over F sharp here. Listening to it just by itself, Will this do it for us? Yeah. You can hear the whistly sound up on the top. It's almost like an organ sound, isn't it? It's a classic sort of old school Selena string sound. Kind of Vangelis without the good filters. All right, so much for this. I'm gonna take this and just make it quiet. And we're gonna wonder, and now we're gonna find out, what is this gonna sound like with just chords going through the beat. Here we go. I kind of love this. It has a kind of a vocoder effect, doesn't it? And why, why not bring in the original noise source at the same time? Here we go. This is beginning to get thick in a really interesting way. You know, I'm looking for chaos a little bit when I'm doing stuff like this. This is pretty hot. I'm going to turn it down to talk over it. And and the chaos is, is part of the fun. I'll tell you what, in the old days, we used, um, like I said, step sequencers, analog noise sources. One time I put a vacuum cleaner in a broom closet with a Neumann microphone and used that as my sound source and then gated it as my snare. It was actually pretty effective and interesting, really resonant in a great way. DAWs don't really want you to push them past their design parameters, but um, at the same time, I think that some of the best music and certainly the most fun you can have in the studio comes from asking yourself the question, what if? And you don't have to have a bunch of sophisticated gear to go exploring. That was all with stuff built right into Logic. I'd probably, if I was going to actually try to make something out of this, use a bunch of third-party plugins and do a lot more work on automation, panning, compression, EQ. That's, you know, 20 minutes of what if. Fun 20 minutes, I can tell you that right now. Hope this was useful. Like and subscribe and ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos. And uh, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.